welcome back today we'll continue with the session of engineers as leaders managers and consultants in the earlier lesson we have learnt about the role of uh, engineers as leaders and managers today we are going to focus on the role of engineers as consultants and in the subsequent lectures we are going to focus on the like the moral values and who is a moral leader and uh, engineers as moral leaders. So, when we are talking of leaders and consultants and engineers role as leaders and consultants, um, in the earlier class we have discussed about the role of uh, engineers as managers and there mostly we um, consider like they are employees of certain organizations and as a part of their organizational role they are taking up certain responsibilities in which they are indirect managing subordinates or like reporting to higher authorities and in those cases many dilemma may be faced and um, with respect to the work with respect to people management with respect to the climate of the organization and how they are going to tackle it today mainly we are going to focus on the role of engineers as consultants so when we are talking of consultants consulting engineers are those engineers who are in private practice so they are not employees of any organization they are in private practice and they are uh, compensated for the fees um, uh, the fees that they get these they are compensated uh, that fees comes for the services they render not but it is not in form of uh, salaries and also uh, we find like they have a greater freedom to make decisions because they are not salaried employees. So, the primary difference from managers and the engineers that we are discussing about it is like they are like in private practice they are not direct employees of organization that give them a greater freedom of decision making. So, we will focus into areas in which consultancies are common and these are advertising, competitive bidding, contingencies and resolution of disputes. So, we will discuss each one by one starting with advertising. In advertising what happens? Um, so, in some corporate engineers are involved in advertising because of their experiences in corporate sales. So, they have the responsibility to ensure that all technical details are mentioned on the products or communicated via the ad campaigns uh, should be true. So, why it is important because in advertisement it tries to uh, make a connection with the end users beneficiaries and the way that connection is made and the, how the communication is made it, it develops a lot of trust of the end users on the company and its product so it is very important that the engineers ensure like whatever technical details are mentioned in the products or in the communicated via ad campaigns should be true. So, a lay person may not be in a position to judge the accuracy of these details. So, it is the moral and ethical responsibility of the engineers to be sure that the communication is made in a very easy way for the understanding of the consumers. The consumers may or may not have uh, the technical expertise and first hand knowledge 
to understand the technical jargons. So, if, if we tell something mentioned in the product. Um, uh, so, it is the responsibility of the engineer to explain the qualities of the product in a very easy way to the end user so that they can understand it. One of the very important thing to take care of is that to ensure that nowhere a deceptive advertising is getting done. So, how when we talk of deceptive advertising, we then need to understand also what we mean by deceptive advertising or how it is created. Whenever we are talking of deceptive advertising, it is a practice where we are trying to mislead people towards taking a decision or we are trying to play with the belief of the person uh, end user, the trust of the end user on the company. So, how if we understand how deceptive adver advertisements are done. So, there are certain processes like by telling outright lies about certain things where certain qualities are not there in your products, but you are, um, or certain things which your design is not going to provide to, but you are trying to claim it by half truths, not disclosing the total part, maybe only highlighting on the benefits, not on the cost part of your design and like hazards of using your products by making false suggestions. So, again giving certain alternatives which may or may not work, hiding the implication that is what you are telling like it is more goes like with the half truth like you are maybe focusing only on the like positive part of it, but you are not focusing on the or you are not letting people know about the negative part of your uh, products. So, by creating ambiguity, so if you are not clear about the end users um, what they want and if you are not clear about the, what your product is going to deliver, then in many cases what happens is ambiguity is created in the like advertisement in the minds of the users. So, that they would, will just think and make meaning based on their level of understanding of the benefits of the product. So, by creating ambiguity is one of the uh, like qualities of deceptive advertising. So, through subliminal manipulation of the conscious, this is where you send certain advertisements, certain positive triggers uh, at the at the subliminal level or you send um, some negative suggestions about your other competitors at the say, uh, subliminal level and that may affect the decision making at the conscious level which may go for or against the product. So, these are certain ways in which deceptive advertisement can be done. So, what may happen as we are discussing is very like we are generally focused towards highlighting on the positive aspect of the product and in many cases the negative aspects are either hidden or played down. So, but those are very important points to be known by the consumers before they make a conscious choice of whether to go for the product or not to go for the product. So, man marketers many times what happens, so they try hard to hide the negative impact of the product, but engineers and managers and advertising consultants like sh should make it very sure like the right information reaches the consumers on time. Otherwise, it may have a long term hazardous health effects and other safety issues also.
Another important point is about competitive bidding which talks about like the conflict of interest. Um, so, in many years what happened like the um, engineers were uh, prohibited from competitive bidding. So, um, which relates to like bidding for a, for a job by submitting functional technical as well as financial bids. So, they were restricted in competitive bidding because as engineers, because as experts in the profession, they were in a better position than laymans to make the right estimates and many times being insiders it was like important like it, it, it was easy uh, for them to make the lowest bid. So, which could be a con which could be a conflict of interest. So, they were restricted from doing any competitive bidding or participating in competitive bidding, but now they are um, allowed to play the role of consultants in helping others to make the bids. So, that they are not generally directly bidding for it, but they are using their wisdom and knowledge of the industry, knowledge of the products to like act as consultants for the person who are bidding for it. So, this is one area. Another important area where uh, consultants have a major role to play is for the safety um, of the um, workers and client needs. Consultant engineers are under an obligation to take care of the safety needs of the clients. So, this becomes more important with respect to design only projects. So, why this becomes important because if we understand like here the engineers do not have any um, control on the end uh, product and how it is used ultimately. In design only projects consultant engineers um, are um, contracted to design something because they, um, but they do not have any supervisory role in the construction. So, they are sometimes problematic because of difficulties in implementing the design uh, which is provided by someone else and which is not available for supervision. So, if the design is given by someone that person must be having some idea of how it should be implemented and how it should be used, what are the safety measures required to it. So, but this design only proje projects may be problematic because somebody wa one is designing and the other is implementing. So, and the pe person who is designing may or may not be available for like discussion or cross check to see like however he thought like it needs to be built, whether it is actually built in that way, whether the use that he have suggested is being the proper use in how it is getting used. So, there is like no connectivity between these three facts as a per someone else has, as um, there is no connectivity between these three facts as someone else has designed and somebody else is looking at that design and try to do something and implement. So, there could always be a gap of knowledge between these two like engineers. So, because there is this gap uh, or mismatch may happen, it is very important to have a designer for on site inspection while the projects are being implemented. And so, this would help to like reduce the loopholes and to like um, to because these could be mainly safety issues 
and try to take care of the other needs of the client. Another important role of consultant engineers could be engineers as expert witnesses and advisors. So, we understand like this being a job where people are involved with like greater resources, manpower. So, it may or um, may not happen, but still there are like situations in which maybe some accidents may have happened or somebody has filed a legal case and then we are at loss to understand how to uh, proceed further because we may not have the domain knowledge as the engineers do have. So, um, they have a major role to play as witnesses and advisors. So, let us see like um, what are these role for expert witnesses. So, engineers meet many times also serve as consultants who provide testimony in adversarial and potential adversarial um, contests. The focus should be uh, on explaining the causes of accident, malfunctions and other things that involve the usage of technology. So, if you see over here like the their focus is on the causes of accidents, malfunctions or other things that involve the uses of technology because it uses like involves the uses of technology and these are after effects of it. Then the uh, engineer is there as an expert to find out what is the degree of form provided by the nature of instrument that is being used. So, does it require to be changed, does it require to be um, like revisited again, what are the compensation to be paid and all. These are certain crucial decisions which needs to be taken by the um, engineers and so sometimes they are taken to be as expert witnesses. So, the, uh, this is one of the role. Another role could be focusing on like um, designing policies for public planning like preparing draft for patents in technology. One of this is of course, like we are talking of is the legal code, um, case where somebody may have filed something against your company or against your group when you need to be there as a um, expert witness. So, engineers may be here uh, hired by either the plaintiff or the difference in both civil lawsuits or criminal proceedings. So, you find like uh, if there is a difference in both the civil lawsuits or criminal proceedings or like there is a difference between the two parties like engineers are sometimes um, taken to be as expert witness. So, while they are talking of witnesses here what happens they generally play the role of forensic engineers. So, engineers therefore are asked to give a testimony for a bad product injuries caused to the consumers using the product or in case of why the accident happened which could be done by automobile engineers. So, like if you are talking of expert, so this is talking of your domain knowledge. So, injuries caused to the consumers using this um, product or in case the ac why the accident happened. So, um, this could be done when you are talking of by um, automobile engineers means we are talking of um, car related accidents. So, um, 
now if you are talking of maybe a you know bridge falling down and some deaths happening so in that case maybe the bridge engineers are better experts in explaining the problem We have to understand before we proceed further like there is a difference between these two terms eyewitnesses and expert witnesses. So um, eyewitnesses testify in matters of perceived facts, expert witnesses are permitted to a wider latitude in testing on facets in the area of expertise in commenting on the views of the opposite side expert witness. So, in eyewitness they are to report the matter as it is, expert witness has a wider role they are more a sort of investigative in nature. So, and using their area of expertise they try to make meaning of something in their own way and uh, try to uh, revisit the problem and to find out like the connection between different unconnected facts and they can also comment on the opposite side of the experts opinions on the um, topic. So, in a nutshell we can tell the role of expert witness is to identify the truth about the maybe causes of accidents if you take that example over here. because the role of engineers is so important, because they have a good influence on the decision making for the organization. So, there could be possible abuses also. Now, let us see some of these abuses. First is hired guns, uh, these relates to like for the sake of money, um, trying to help the person um, um, who is in the fault by giving wrong testimony. So, um, actually taking sides with the wrong person for the sake of money, this is what the definition can we think of. So, for example, a person who fell from the ladder sued the manufacturer for its bad quality, it may happen. So, a person um, fell from the ladder and found like maybe the manufacturing some like um, quality is bad or like finishing is not good. So, like um, the original role of the engineer is because he understands designing much better than the um, lay person his job is to stand beside the lay person and to question the practices of the manufacturer. But in the hired structural engineer is one who is been hired by the party who is originally doing um, wrong or was at fault, so that the engineer gives a favorable report for the manufacturer for the money that was paid to him. So, this part is very important. So, I am trying to help the person who has given a wrong testimony in some way I am just going to help that person in some way because he or she has given me some money. Next is we can talk of financial biases. Mm, engineers who are paid by the party at fault to move the investigations in different directions. So, if we try to bring in different tracks to a discussion and everything may be one thing is contrary to the other. So, everything may cut one through the other and we um, do not have like to decide what you are going to do. 
so this is purposefully done to distract the um, processes legal processes so when you're talking of financial biases engineers are paid by the party to at fault to move the investigations in a different direction so that the people get lost and they have to start and there is wastage of time and maybe the discussion doesn't get completed so ego biases like influencing by through talking influencing engineers to identify their own side of the dispute which is maybe we should be neutral because a primary responsibility is towards the society at large sympathy bias so this is another thing sometimes like the court gets way, like filled with people who are maybe trying to express their sorrows in terms of like dramas and like very blowed up attitude so um, it, it may so happen like the engineers may get like uh, identified with the plight of the people and the investigations may get influenced by like if he is a very good speaker he will start fighting for the rights of these people and will force the government to take care of it and so this is one of the consequences there could be other consequences both from positive and negative aspect so after that what happens like mm, another important role when you find like mm, after this uh, mm, legal aspects where they were hired as um, where they were um, some of the biases are um, playing the roles and they may get sim sympathy bias and all so um, and that may um, affect the decision making so what we find like the another role for the consultant could be like that of advertiser sorry advice another role could be advisors in planning and policy making so if a planning is done if policy making is done how do they act as advisors so because it whatever decision is taken about the use of the product and all generally it is taken about policies that affects the people at large so like framing policies for creating online services for the poor so because it involves um, large amount of money so um, it is important like it is like the um, people look at it with important they do not come just for the sake of the money but they understand the importance of such big um, projects why such money is involved maybe the certain important findings are going to come out so um, what happens because of this project is important sometimes lots of money is Uh, just paid to ensure that the designing of the technical system which in turn guarantee the smooth execution of sub projects by simplifying the technology for the poor so mm, because of this importance of the design so they are and there is a great involvement of the engineer so we need to understand that we need to understand how they may play a role how they may play the role of advisors by helping others to like reach certain objectives and how they can make things improve on the policy making
so the what we find like the job of the managing engineers lies in overcoming the technical um, competencies why this line is important if we go back it's it's really important like because such a huge amount of money is involved then if the technology is very complex some people may understand it some people may not understand it like here the population as you mentioned it is a technology for the poor. So, they may not be in a position to understand very complex thing, but that complex things may need to be spoken to them in a very lucid way. So, the role of the engineers becomes important for that because they can understand the complexity of the issues, but while trying to explain they need to like make it more a simplified version so that everybody can understand it. So, that is why it is told like the job of the engineers and how good you are in it lies in overcoming the technical complexities. So, in the next session we are going to discuss about moral leadership and uh, which like maybe aims at serving in developing skill sets of others and like um, we will discuss some key questions also and try to work on its probable answers so that we get to understand the contents of the chapter in a much better way. Thank you.